Hello and welcome to section 7, where we'll be discussing the incident application, the problem application, the change application, the CMDB or configuration application, the service catalog application, and finally the knowledge application. It may seem a bit odd that we're just now covering these applications. However, because we've already discussed configurations and the inner workings of ServiceNow, I believe you will get a much deeper grasp of these applications than if we were to discuss them before you knew about business rules and how tables and fields work. In this video, we'll discuss the incident application as well as SLAs. The incident application is by far the most commonly used application in ServiceNow. Since ServiceNow was originally an ITSM system, Incident, Problem, Change, CMDB, and Service Catalog sit at the heart of ServiceNow. When we look at Incident inside of ServiceNow in one moment, we'll look into the out-of-the-box configurations, the different types of related records to an incident, a powerful new feature called Contextual Search, and other application settings and files. We'll also discuss SLAs or service level agreements. Simply put, SLAs define time periods when certain records, such as an incident, must meet promised deadlines. SLAs track if a consistent, previously agreed on level of service is being provided. For example, an organization promises its employees that all Priority 1 incidents will be acknowledged within 15 minutes and will be either fixed or a workaround provided within two hours. SLAs are mostly used for incidents but may be used for other records in the system. SLAs can leverage workflows which are powerful tools used to define processes. We'll discuss workflows in depth in the next section. SLAs consist of start conditions, pause conditions, stop conditions, and reset conditions. Time zones and durations play a crucial role in defining quality SLAs. SLAs also have a retroactive start feature, which allows the system to trigger the start of an SLA based on different events and fields, such as the updated field versus the created field. Now we'll take a look at the incident application and SLAs in ServiceNow. It's important to note that we've made a few minor changes to the incident application throughout this course. If your instance does not look the exact same, don't be alarmed. Always refer to the ServiceNow documentation for any inconsistencies you may notice. We'll start by expanding the incident application. Here we see a number of modules. There is a create new module and a number of list view modules that have different filters. As we can see, the assigned to me module provides my username in the assigned to filter. The open module shows all incidents where active is equal to true and so on. There is an overview module that shows a dashboard which includes graphs and other reports. There is also a critical incidents map which shows a world map with the incident locations marked. The modules in the incident application are fairly common in other applications throughout ServiceNow. We'll click the create new module. First, let's examine the number field. We'll right-click and go to Configure Dictionary. Here we see there are a few attributes, a default value, and a few other related records. Let's take a look at the number maintenance record for incident.
We'll change the number from 10,000 to 20,000. So now when we create a new incident, we can see the number is INC002000. Now let's take a look at the caller field. We'll provide businessman Bob and once the field is populated, we see an exclamation button and information button. The exclamation button is an attribute that will show a pop-up window displaying all other incidents this caller has opened. The information icon appears on any reference field once a value has been supplied. We can either hover over it to get a pop-up of the referenced record, or we can click the button to go directly into the referenced record. If we hover over the information icon and hold shift on our keyboard, the pop-up will stay up until we close it. Now let's go into the dictionary of this field. We see the attribute which shows the other incidents associated with the caller. We also see the reference information and a number of other fields. We'll go back and provide a location in the location reference field. Now let's take a look at the category and subcategory fields. We can see that the subcategories are dependent on the category field. Let's take a look at how this works. We'll go into the subcategory dictionary entry. And in the dependent field section, we see the category field. If we scroll down to the choices related list, we see all 22 subcategories. In the last column on the list, we see the dependent values, which map to the category choices. So, for example, if hardware is selected on the category field, we'll see the CPU subcategory and the choice list. We'll go back to the form and provide a configuration item. We can see two new UI actions here. There is a black information icon and a branch icon. The black information icon shows us all incidents that are opened with the CI. And the branch icon takes us to the CI map. Now let's take a look at the impact, urgency, and priority fields. At first glance, it may look like UI policies are used to calculate the priority field, but it turns out there is another place the logic is stored. These mappings are located in the Data Lookup Definitions module. We'll go into the Priority Lookup, and here we can see information that is related to the mappings. If we go into the Matcher table, We'll see a table representing the matrix of impact and urgency combinations. Now let's go back to a new incident. We have a few other fields such as open by, contact type, and state fields. We also have the assignment group and assign to fields. Now let's take a look at the short description field. 
When we start typing in the short description, we see knowledge articles that appear under the related search results section. We can even preview the knowledge articles. This is a powerful feature called contextual search. Let's take a look at the application. If we go into the search context, we can see the incident deflection context where the configurations are stored. Here we can define all kinds of things like which tables are searched and what fields are used in the search. We can also specify limits and conditions. Now we'll go into the Open Incident List view. Throughout this course, I've mainly clicked the Information icon when I'd like to go into a specific record, even though you can usually click the first column cell to go into that record as well. However, it's important to note that there is one caveat to this. If the first column happens to be a reference field to another table, in this case we'll make it the caller field, which references the user table, then when we click this, it takes us into the referenced record instead of the incident record. This can cause a bit of confusion, which is why I always try to use the information icon and I recommend you do the same unless you'd like to access a referenced record from a list view. Now let's go into an existing incident. We'll scroll down to the notes section. Here we can see a watch list, which is a list variable that holds user records. Anyone in this list will receive notifications when updates are made to this incident. We'll add businessman Bob and ourselves. There is also a work notes list which will notify the users if work notes are added. Finally, there is an additional comments field which the customer or caller can see, a work notes field which only users with the iTool role can see, and an activity stream which shows specific activities that are related to changes on this incident. We'll add some notes and save the record. Now, under the activity stream, we can see our updates. Now, let's take a look at the related records section. Here, we can add related problems or change records. We can see an existing problem record which is related to this incident. If we go into the Form Context menu, we see options to Create Request or Create Normal Change. The Create Request will take us to the Service Catalog and the Create Normal Change will automatically create a change which references this incident record. We can also create a problem, however, it is not shown here since we already have a problem record related to this incident. In the Closure Information section, we can see a Knowledge checkbox, which will automatically create a new, unpublished knowledge article when this incident is closed, and a Closed By and Closed Date. Finally, in the Related Lists, we have Task SLAs, Affected CIs that are related to this incident, Child Incidents, Attached Knowledge Articles, and Attachments. Now we'll take a look at SLAs. If we type in service level, we'll see the service level management application where SLAs are defined. We'll click on SLA definitions and go into the priority one SLA. We can see a number of fields here, such as the SLA name, the type of agreement, the table this SLA applies to, an SLA workflow, the duration type along with the duration, a schedule field, and time zone. Below we have the conditions. We can see that this SLA will start 
when a new incident is created with a priority of one. We also see the retroactive start checkbox. If this is selected, then the SLA timer can start based on different system events, such as the updated time versus the created time. We have a pause condition, which means any time the incident state is switched to one of these awaiting choices, the SLA timer will pause. We also have the stop condition. The SLA will end when the incident state is marked resolved. Finally, we have a reset condition, which is not used here. Now we'll take a look at the workflow for this SLA. Again, we'll discuss workflows in the next section, but for now, we'll quickly go over the activities involved in this SLA. Here we can see that when the duration of the SLA reaches 50%, we notify the assignee. We repeat this at the 25% time and at the breach of the SLA. Now we'll look at the SAN001 underpinning contract. We see that if a configuration item of storage area network 001 is provided, this SLA with a three hour duration will start. Now let's create a priority one incident with the SAN underpinning contract. Here we can see our two SLAs. If we go into them, we can click the Show Workflow Related link, which will show us the SLA workflow. Here we can see that the workflow is waiting for the 50% trigger to fire off a notification.